Greetings, folks. Joseph Kursky here with you to examine climate with spatial technology. Now, there is no shortage of data, layers, tools that you can investigate climate with using spatial technology. Ditto for weather. But let's just focus on one particular web map with a multitude of layers in it that I think is one of the best resources for examining climate and climate change with spatial technology. It's called the Keppen Geiger Observed and Predicted Climate Shifts Dataset. Big mouthful of words. Keppen Geiger Observed and Predicted Climate Shifts Dataset. So as, as the name implies, it's, it's observed and predicted and it's change over space and time. Go ahead and open that map in ArcGIS Online. Go ahead and skim the metadata. We always want to pay attention to the metadata. Where did it come from? Who created it? Why it was created? What scale was it created at? And so on. It gives in part the following information. This service time enables a series of world maps for the extended period 1901 to 2100, 200 years, to depict global trends and observe climate and projected climate change scenarios. So get your students thinking about what's a scenario. It's based on a model. There are different models. They use different inputs. So get them, get them immersed in, into that just a little bit at least. The climate classification in this map comprises a total of 31 climate areas described by a code of three letters. The first letter describes the main classes, namely equatorial climates A, arid climates B, warm temperate climates C, snow climates D, and polar climates E. You probably remember this from your physical geography courses, or maybe you teach this regularly in your school or university. The second letter accounts for precipitation and the third letter for temperature classes. The map service author also added three attribute fields to decode the letters for simpler use. In the attribute table, main climate, precipitation, and temperature correspond to these original coded letters. The legend also reflects these attributes rather than the coded letters, making it a bit easier to use. Now let's look at the Keppen Geiger Observed and Predicted Climate Shifts data in ArcGIS Online. Go ahead and open that map. Open it in, in the map viewer and the map displays in ArcGIS Online, a web-based GIS. Notice that it is different in, in some ways from some other maps you might have in paper form, wall maps, etc. In this case, it's in a different map projection than many of the other maps that we've observed in this spatial technology module. Here, the map, map is cast in the World Geodetic System 1984, rather than in Web Mercator, which has been used in many other uh, activities. As you know, as a geography instructor, because we're projecting the oblate spheroid 3D shape of the Earth onto a 2D map, whether paper or digital, all maps therefore have distortion in area, distance, direction, and shape, and usually in more than one of these four elements, right, folks? Map projections are similar to scale in that there's no best map projection. It depends on the content that you're analyzing and your goals for your lesson. However, the choice of map projection really matters for several reasons. The map projection influences the message, the information that you are conveying. Many projections have been criticized for distorting people's perceptions of lands and countries, especially those that are not their own. And number two, measuring areas and distances on maps is dependent upon the projection they're in, which will affect the spatial analysis done in spatial technology. Climate investigation with the Keppen Geiger observed and predicted climate shifts data. All right, let's investigate climate with the Keppen Geiger observed and predicted climate shifts data. Open a new tab in the browser and access this map. It contains, it contains the same content as the one you just opened, but this one is cast in the Web Mercator projection. The map you will be using in this activity is on the left, and the map of the same content after changing the base map to dark gray in Web Mercator is on the right. Web Mercator is used for much mapping, including the default in ArcGIS Online and Google Maps. For studies of neighborhoods or a stretch of beach, the map projection really doesn't matter a great deal. It's a, it's a local study and it's, it's of large scale, a lot of detail, not much area. But for global studies, the projection can make a big difference. For example, compare the size and shape of Greenland and Scandinavia uh, between the two maps. Note that in ArcGIS Online, you can use lots of different maps, projections, and uh, for example, the one we will use for this climate region study. 
Now, once you open the original Keppen Geiger Observed and Predicted Climate Shifts, WGS84, under the map, you'll find the time slider timeline. Slide the right time slider arrow under the map all the way to the right so you can examine all of your years that are available to you in, as predicted in the, in the data set. Teaching tip. Some classrooms lack the bandwidth for 30 students to play the climate shift animations simultaneously, so you might experience better results by using the slider tabs rather than using the play button. I, I pretty much avoid m having a whole group of students push play at the same time. In the upper left, experiment with the show contents of map and show map legend. Examine various climate zones to obtain more information about them by clicking on them on the map. Globally, what would you say are the three largest climate zones in terms of total area? Now let's investigate regions with the Keppen Geiger observed and predicted climate shifts data. How about Greenland? On your map, zoom and pan to Greenland as follows, turning on the observed 1976 to 2000 and the predicted using scenario A1F1. According to the metadata, scenario A1F1 represents a scenario where economic and te technological growth is achieved through intensive fossil fuel use. Make sure the left marker on the timeline is all the way to the left and the right marker is all the way to the right. Toggle between the observed 1976 to 2000 and the predicted using scenario A1F1 as shown here. Observe the size of the polar EF climate zone the medium blue color. EF is polar ice cap. Average temperature of the warmest month for the EF climate is 0 degrees C or 32 F or less. Precipitation generally is greater than potential evaporation. Make one observation about the predicted changes in the EF climate zone in Greenland and two implications of those predictions. If you have time, explore the other models presented. Okay, let's look at Victoria, Australia. Pan now to Victoria, Australia or enter it in the above right search box and go right to it. Click on it now and observe the 2001 to 2015 climate type as shown here. It should be CFB, warm temperate, warm summer. Next, toggle between observed and predicted using scenario A1F1 as you did for Greenland. You should see that CFA increases, hot summer, while the area of CFB, warm summer, decreases. Zoom out until you see more of Australia and repeat the process, noting the size of the equatorial climate zone in the north and northeastern part of Australia. Globally, the largest shifts between the main classes of equatorial climate, A, arid climate, B, warm temperate climate, C, snow climate, D, and polar climate, E, on a global land areas are estimated as 2.6 to 3.4 percent E to D, so that's polar to snow, 2.2 to 4.7 percent D to C, snow to warm temperate, 1.3 to 2.0 C to B, which is warm temperate to arid, and 2.1 to 3.2 percent C to A, warm temperate to equatorial. Let's examine models in spatial technology as they do for other activities. In this lesson, spatial technologies provide a hands-on supplement to your instructional goals and themes, in this case about climate and climate change. A critical part of the discussion while using the tools is that these predictions are based on climate models. Climate models. Discuss with students what a model is and use examples in engineering, biology, physics, mathematics, and geography. A useful phrase to discuss with your students may be, all models are wrong, but some are useful. That's not my quote, that's a famous model quote. As in other disciplines, some of these climate models may be considered as completely accurate, but are based on best available data sources. For more discussion, see Humans and Their Models on physicalgeography.net, some of my favorite resources right there. Making maps of climate and using the geographic perspective is more, than, is more useful than simply examining tables of weather and climate data in my view, from weather stations, ice core samples, and the fossil record. Some students may need a background in the effects of the Earth rotation, oceans, land masses, and solar radiation on climate, and for those situations, use this discussion on physicalgeography.net. So congratulations, folks. You have looked at climate 
with spatial technology. And again, you can dip into this just with a little toe into the waters or put both feet in. Little toe in the waters. Get your students to think about where's the equatorial zone, where's the arid zone, where is warm temperate, where is hot summers, where is warm summers in Australia and around the world. And for more immersion, you can actually investigate the changes in the climate as we have done here using these different models. Thanks and keep on investigating.